What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. I was out in the garden today filming a bunch of other stuff and I reminded myself that I wanted to talk about my Swiss chard. A lot of you asked for a follow-up as to how the predatory wasps actually handled the leaf miners. If it was a worthwhile investment, if I thought I would ever do it again. So I wanted to do a follow-up because it's the end of the season and I've been able to kind of observe the, the, the growth of these to really see if it was a worthwhile thing. Also to kind of just see how effective it was. But also I wanted to do a Swiss chard tour. This is something I've never done before, but it's something that I really want to do because I think Swiss chard is hands down. You, I could be wrong I and mean, you could disagree. I would agree to disagree that Swiss chard is one of the prettiest crops in the garden. I, I have to make that claim. I think is one of the prettiest crops in the entire garden. So I wanted to show you all the different varieties that I'm growing and just how stunning they are. So with that being said, let's first talk about how the uh, how the predatory might or how the predatory wasps did against the leaf miners. So uh, about five six months ago, we had some really aggressive leaf miners. Uh, they were uh, basically laying eggs in our leaves and the leaf miners were decimating our crops. So we went and bought a, uh, a predatory wasp online, or a bunch of them, thousands of them actually, and released them in our garden and with the expectation that they were going to sting the leaf miner uh, larva and use them as a host. The insect that we released was called the leaf miner destroyer. So with a name like that, I would expect pretty stellar results. Now I will say for the first three to four months, the results were incredible. If I would have had, you know, three or four raised beds of Swiss chard planted out, I probably would make this a decision to, do, to use them every single year. I thought the, the results were incredible. The, uh, the leaf miners literally almost uh, were wiped out for the better part of summer. However, when the cold weather hit, is when the predatory wasps left. Now, predatory wasps like warm weather. They're a warm weather insect. They will die if they're exposed to cold weather. And so when the cold weather arrived, they left, as in they left to wherever they leave to, the garden in the sky. <laughs> so so they, went to, uh, they went to predator wasp heaven. And um, the thing that stuck around was the leaf miner. The leaf miners returned with a vengeance and decimated not all, but a lot of the leaves that uh, that were existing. They really did a number on them. So was it completely worthwhile? No. Was it effective? Absolutely. Was it worth the $80 that I spent? Not for as much Swiss chard as I'm growing, but if you were growing a whole greenhouse full and it was you know your livelihood, I could certainly justify it. So all that being said, Yes and no. <laughs> it's, it's yes and no. Um, would I do it again? Probably not. It was a fun experiment though for, for what we were doing. Now, I wanted to show you the Swiss chard that we are growing. I want you to come on in close and check this out. The Swiss chard we are growing is actually from MI Gardener Seed. Um, it is a, a combination of several different varieties. We're growing one of Ruby Red. We're growing another one, which is Ford Hook. We're growing another one, which is um, Pink Rhubarb and rainbow lights so rainbow lights is like a big mix there's a bunch of different uh in there and so there's going to be some overlap but we grew a bunch of different varieties and that way we had so much color because i personally love coming out and seeing colorful things like i love a garden that's super colorful that's why i like growing heirloom tomatoes because they're all different colors that's why i like growing you know swiss chard because it's, it's every plant it offers this incredible color variation and so coming in close, let's do a Swiss chard tour because if you've never grown Swiss chard before, this might inspire you to try some. All right, so the first one I wanna show you is this orange. Oh my goodness. So the leaves are just this deep velvety purple, absolutely stunning. No damage on them whatsoever. So beautiful. But look at the color variation. You get this like ombre of orange and yellow. Just so incredible. Coming in here, like you see, like look, look at that color. The camera just doesn't even do any justice for that, that color. But that ombre is so beautiful. This is the orange that we have, one of the orange variations. Coming over here, we have one of the Ford hooks. 
This is just your standard green, but even the standard green, like look at how beautiful these are. Look at how, I like, I love the veins. They're just, the leaves, the leaves are larger than life. Just so incredible, so, so incredible. This is one of my favorite uh, varieties just because of how productive and disease resistant it is, pest resistant. It's just, man, it's amazing. Coming over here, we have some of the yellow. The yellow is so beautiful as well. I mean, they're all beautiful, but the yellow actually looks a little bit more orange when it starts to age, but look at this. Look how beautiful this yellow is. Every single leaf has yellow veins running through it, and the plant just, it just produces just incredibly beautiful stems. Coming over here, I've got the, the rhubarb. The rhubarb is this deep, deep, so it's a green leaf, not the purple leaf, but it's got this deep red vein to it. Basically looks like rhubarb, that's <laughs> where it gets its name. Um, but this is just incredible, and look how, look how red those stems are. There's no color correction. I don't uh, have the ability to color correct. So these are just as you're seeing, if not a little less vibrant than what I'm seeing. It is awe-inspiring. Coming over here, we have what we kind of call as your pink or your candy cane. This is your pink. This is another kind of a, a red leaf, but it produces these beautiful pink stalks. I like love these. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Look at that beautiful pink. It's so, so stunning. So there's the pink. Uh, coming over here, we have another one. This is um, this is a, a green-leafed orange. So like rather than the, the orange over there, uh, this is a green-leafed orange. So you get the nice green leaf, but you get this beautiful kind of like, almost like a, like a orange creamsicle color. Just so pretty. Absolutely stunning. Love that one. And then uh, we have, um, this is a different, a different variety here. This is orange pink variegated. This is like, wow. Tell me, this is in incredible. One side is this neon pink. Flip it over, look at that. Wow. On a red leaf, tell me that's not incredible or what. Wow, wow, wow. This is like, it's just amazing. Absolutely incredible. Um, over here we have uh, another, a different type of pink to, uh, pink to orange. This is a green leaf. So we have the green leaf. Some leaves are a little more orange. Some leaves are a little more pink. But you'll notice as you flip them over, you get like, kind of like a yellowy color, pink. It's a little, little more yellowy. This is a little more orange here, just depending on which one you pick. Wow, that one's orange. Wow, that's beautiful. Pink on the back, orange on the front. Wow, just incredible. So those are the different colors. We also have some, some others in here as well that I haven't really talked about. I mean, there's different variations. There's, there's some in here that are more pink, some more, more white. This one is, um, this one is uh, another Ford hook here. This one is more of a the nice thing is they're all different. They're all different, you know? So like this one, this one's more of a spear-shaped Ford hook. So like this one's way more pointy and the leaves, the stem is actually way fatter and flatter. Like look at that compared to, compared to this one. So look at the two, they're vastly different. They're vastly different. Like how much fatter the one stem is than the other. Totally different. Wow, I just, I love it. I'm so fascinated by Swiss chard. Such a beautiful green. Such a, a delicious one to add to your food, to add to your dishes, um, and obviously to, to put in your garden just to look at the beauty of. It's amazing. All right, so there's the Swiss chard tour and a little overview on how the, uh, the beneficial insect experiment went. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And I really do hope that you were inspired to grow some Swiss chard yourself. I know a lot of people kind of fear growing something that they've never grown before because it's like, well, what if I don't like it? I guarantee you that if you like spinach, if you like kale, if you like lettuce, if you like any of those leafy greens, you're going to love Swiss chard. If you've ever had beet greens before, beet greens are just the smaller cousin to Swiss chard. They are absolutely incredible, super delicious, super nutritious, and super beautiful. So I hope you all will try them. I hope you all learned something new. Let me know in the comments box below if this video inspired you to try growing Swiss chard. Um, also, let me know your favorite varieties uh, if you've, you know, if you've grown them. Also, 
Let me know your favorite variety from my patch. I would really be interested to see which one you liked that I was growing. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. And we'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.